Now feelings are real and we don't need to deny that we have them, but we do need to deny them the right to manipulate us and control us. I do what I do because I've seen God's power transform my own life and He will do it for you. The key to everything is found in God's Word. I'm Joyce Meyer, and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. Watchman Nee, who's a great Christian writer, said that emotions are the believer's number one enemy. Ooh. They keep people walking in the flesh. They keep people out of the will of God. I think it's just good to take a little time this afternoon just to remember how easily we're led around by our feelings. Do you know how much we tell other people what we think, what we want, and how we feel? Well, Joyce, will you pray for me? I feel like God doesn't love me. <laughs> well, Joyce, will you pray for me? I don't, I don't feel like God hears my prayers. Well, Joyce, will, will you pray for me? I just don't feel like that I can go on. You listen to how often people tell you how they feel. Now, feelings are real, and we don't need to deny that we have them, but we do need to deny them the right to manipulate us and control us. Right? Is there anybody here today who believes that if you would control your emotions a little bit more and not let them control you as much that your life would get a whole lot better. Amen. So, like I said, I need this. Even if you don't, I'll be happy to listen to myself. All right. We cannot always control how we feel, but believe it or not, we can control what we do. Amen. You know, I'll just, I'll just give you an example. Um, my dad abused me. My mother knew it and let him. Uh, I went to one of my aunts and uncles for help, and they didn't want to get involved. Now, here I'm this child being sexually abused, and all these people that are supposed to love me were hurting me. Now, it was easy to hate them and resent them until I wanted to go deeper in God. <laughs> and when I made that decision, then... I kept coming up against walls of things that hindrances in my life that, like we said this morning, the chief slinger, the devil, had slung at me. <laughs> and in order for me to then go on to a next level with God, that thing had to be submitted to God and had to be moved out of my way. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You, you cannot have a right relationship with God and be angry with people and have bitterness and resentment in your heart. It just will not work. And because there's so many people that hurt us and so many people that don't seem to care about us, I can tell you forgiveness is something you're going to have to practice probably almost every single day of your life in some way, shape, or form. If you're around people, you're going to have an opportunity to need to forgive people. Okay, so fast forward all these years, I worked through what I, the best I knew how to, to forgive. But, you know, I wanted it more to just be like, okay, I forgive you. I'm not mad, but please stay out of my life. <laughs> you know, there's forgiveness at a distance. <laughs> and then there's forgiveness that gets real close and intimate. And that's a whole different story. So, I don't want to take a long time on this, but ultimately, my dad, my mother, and my aunt, because my aunt and uncle never had any children, and my aunt was my mother's sister, and my uncle was my dad's brother, so there was a very close relationship there. Spent a lot of time with my aunt and uncle when I was young. I only have one brother, and he, well, he's deceased now, but he, was, he couldn't even take care of himself. I needed to take care of him too, so he couldn't help me. So long story short, I came down to all three of them, my dad, my mom, and my aunt, all three of them needed to be taken care of because they all lived a really long time. <laughs> so then I see this scripture in Timothy that says, if you have relatives that are in need, <laughs> 
and you won't take care of them, then you're worse than an infidel. It doesn't say do it if you feel like it. It doesn't say do it if they've been nice to you. It doesn't say do it if they deserve it. It just says do it. Well, I really wish somebody else, some remote cousin or member of the family somewhere <laughs> would have stepped up, but nobody did. Now, I'm already so busy in my life, the last thing I have time to do now is take care of three elderly people. Because it gets to the point where you got to get their groceries, you got to get their grass cut, and it all gets very expensive because they're not making money anymore, they're just costing money. So I had all three of them on my hands, and I just want to tell you, and you know, they've all gone home to be with the Lord. My aunt passed away last year, and you know what? I'm just going to be very honest with you. Because of the relationship that we had throughout my life, and because really none of them had done anything for me or been there for me when I needed them, it was the most flesh grating thing that I ever had to do in my life was to spend 15 years <laughs> making sure all their needs were met. But I'll tell you something. It was probably the most powerful thing that I ever did, and more than anything that God gave me the grace to do, it probably defeated the devil in my life, and no telling. But I want to make it clear that I didn't feel like doing it. I didn't want to do it. So you don't have to feel like doing everything you do. And you don't have to want to do everything you do. This is where we come into deeper levels of spiritual maturity where we say, God, I don't want to. And I don't even really think it's so fair that you asked me to. <laughs> but nevertheless, your will be done and not mine. So I might as well just throw this out there. You know, maybe you've got parents that didn't treat you right. <laughs> just maybe, somebody, I don't know. And maybe you don't ever bother to call or you won't do anything for them. And well, you know what? Maybe this is a wake-up call. You don't get to just do what you want to do if you want to follow God. You say, God, what do you want me to do? And you do what he wants you to do. And you know what? When you start living like that, God's blessings are going to chase you down and overtake you. We all come up against things in our life, it's like, <clears throat> you ever feel that way, like you're walking into a wall and you just wish God would move it out of the way, but he's not going to some way, somehow, you got to find the right door and walk through it to get to the next level with God. And that door is always some door of obedience that you need to walk through in your life. And even now, I look back at the way I felt and I mean, I did a lot for them. It was expensive. We went to the nursing home all the time. We made sure they went to the doctor. I did the very best that I could, but I look back now and, I, and, and still I think, you know, there, I probably could have done a little better. So I'm just telling you, don't make the wrong choices and then spend half of your life in regret because you can't go back and fix something that you should have done right to start with. Come on, is God speaking to anybody? All right. Watchman Nee also said this, and I love this. He who lives by emotion lives without principle. Wow. <laughs> and you know what a principle is? It's an accepted rule of action, a course of conduct that you are committed to are a standard that you live your life by. And I can tell you this is one of the things that is seriously missing in our society today. Well, there's no absolute truth. Do what you feel like. Everything's relative. You're the most important person on the planet. As long as you're happy, things are good. And that's not the standard that God calls us to live by. We're called to Christ-likeness. 
And in every area of our life, if we want to do what's right, we need to check the Bible and see how Jesus would have handled that situation. And then any, and see, we can think, well, I can't, I can't, I can't. But no, let's back up. If you can't, then God wouldn't have told you to. And if he told you to, then you can. You can't do it without him, but you can do it through him and by his grace and by his power. Now, Watchman Nee wrote a great book. It's pretty thick, but it's really good. If you want some deeper reading, it's called The Spiritual Man. Has anybody read that book? Okay. So, uh, we, and this is, this is just a little section out of the book, and I want to take the time to read it, just a couple paragraphs. We should remember that in walking after the Spirit, all of our actions must be governed by principles. Since the Spirit has its own laws and principles, to walk by the Spirit is to walk according to its laws. With spiritual principles, everything becomes sharply defined. There is a precise standard of right and wrong. If it's yes, then it's yes. If it's no, then it's no. Rather the day is clear or cloudy, if it's no, then it's no. <laughs> Rather exciting or depressive, if it's no, then it's no. The Christian's walk should follow a precise standard. And the Word of God must be the standard for our life. Let me say again, and we all want our way, me just as much as anybody else, but it is not God's job to spend all of his time trying to keep us happy. I don't want you patty caking this afternoon. I want to hear some loud clapping. Amen. <laughs> But if his emotion is not handed over to death, <laughs> he cannot abide a permanent standard. He will live by the whim of his vacillating feelings and not according to a definite principle. A principled life differs very greatly from an emotional life. Anyone who behaves from emotion cares neither for principle nor for reason, but only for his own feelings. If he's happy or thrilled, he might be led to undertake a certain project, even though he may know deep inside that it's unreasonable. <laughs> but when he feels cold or melancholy or despondent, he won't even so much as fulfill his basic duties before his feelings fail to support him. <laughs> Let me get, put that to you in a way that you can understand it. When you're feeling high and good, oh, yes, praise God, I'll commit to that, I can do that. <laughs> But then when you have kind of a low day, it's like, well, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that anymore. You know, it's easy to love people when they're doing what you want. It's harder to love people when they're not doing what you want, and maybe they haven't done what you want them to do for a long time. One of the things that God put in my heart that I share a lot with the people that I have the privilege of teaching is that we can feel totally wrong and still, by the grace of God, choose to do what is right. And, and you know, some of you, I don't know, maybe some of you, this is kind of like a new gate you're standing at today. It kind of might, I don't know, maybe all you've gone to is bless me meetings. You know? But, <laughs> but I'm interested in helping you not just have victory in the meeting, but to have some victory when you go home and nothing much has changed. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I always tell people, hey, the conference is great and we'd love to just stay here forever, but we all gotta go home. <laughs> and some of the same stuff we left is still gonna be there. I do not have a magic message to make all your circumstances disappear. But I do have great messages on how you can change. So we will, we will commit to things that are totally unreasonable that even way down deep inside we know are silly. 
And we can think we're going to pull it off because we're excited that day. And then when those emotions fade, then we no longer want to do what we said that we were going to do. If God's children would pay a little attention to their emotion, they would notice how changeable they are and how dangerous it is, therefore, to walk by them. So often their attitude is if the word of God agrees with their feelings, they observe it, but if the word does not agree with their feelings, then they simply reject it. <laughs> it's always interesting for me as a teacher to watch the things that people uh, get excited about when I'm teaching. If it's something that's going to benefit them, I mean, I can talk about something free from the platform. You would not believe how, I mean, well, normally well-behaved Christians can act if you say that you're about to give away free teaching CDs. I mean, you, better, you don't want to be down here in the front because they will attack you to get the free CD. <laughs> Amen? Or man, if we start throwing stuff out there, whoo, people will jump over seats and jump over each other and whatever just to get this thing free. But if you tell them you, wanna, you want them to go buy this, hmm. <laughs> See, we don't behave nearly as well when it's going to cost us. Yeah, oh, I like you. <laughs> I like people that I can tell need what I say. Matter of fact, it's kind of fun when I say it and I can tell it's hurting a little bit. <laughs> You know why? It may hurt right now, but later, it's going to make you happy. All right. There have to be definite rights and wrongs. God's Word is true no matter how I feel. Okay. The emotional person buys what they can't pay for. <laughs> and then when they can't pay for it, they go borrow money on another charge card to pay for what they bought on that charge card. I mean, the world has provided us with some of the craziest systems today. I mean, it is unbelievable the debt that people are in because they have purchased things that they don't even know where they're at now, don't use them, and didn't even really want them when they bought them. I don't know if you're anything like me. I mean, I, this actually happened to me the other day. I was going through my closet, just looking at different tops. I like to go through and prune my clothes sometimes and give them to people, you know, if I'm not using them. And, and so I saw a top and later on over here, I thought it was the same top. And I thought, no. And so I took it back over here. I had bought two of the exact same top. <laughs> exactly the same. And then when I saw my daughter, the next time she had that top on, I said, I got two of those. See, we are sometimes, like, if I need something, I might go buy another one and then find the one I bought a year ago a week later. Have you ever done that? Or, you know, we're always going to keep something in case we need it. Well, no, I'm not going to give that away. I'm going to keep that in case I need it. But here's the thing that I've learned. When I do need it, I'm not going to know what I did with it. So if I'm not using it, I might as well bless somebody else with it and trust God to give me what I need when I need it. Have you been looking for a 365-day devotional? Well, look no further than the promises for your everyday life devotional from Joyce Meyer. There's a focus verse for all 365 days of the year, along with a prayer starter. Get your copy of Promises for Your Everyday Life devotional at joycemeyer.org slash 365devo. We have an exciting YouTube offer that's specially designed to help you spend quality time with your kids and nurture their growth with God, the incredible power of God's Word, and Best Day Ever, two remarkable books crafted to inspire kids as they embark on a faith-filled exploration and discover the wonders of God's love. Unleash the power of faith and create unforgettable moments with your kids. Go to joycemeyer.org slash kidsdevo and grab this limited time offer today. 
The biggest thing that we need to do is learn how to think like God thinks, and the only way you can do that is by knowing the Word of God. In Words to Live By, Joyce Meyer shares how studying the Word of God transformed her life. Experience a deeper and more meaningful relationship with God through the captivating collection of verses in this beautiful hardcover book by Joyce Meyer. Discover the transformative power of His Word. Words to Live By from Joyce Meyer. Get your YouTube exclusive offer today. Go to joycemeyer.org slash words and the number two. Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace. Remember, this limited-time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to joycemeyer.org pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace. The mind actually is the battlefield. That's where we win or lose the war with Satan. He said all he gets to say. <laughs> he the rest says, of the day, yes, the rest of the day is mine. You start asking God to heal you and he will restore. He's the God of all comfort. And I am so grateful that I know how to call on God.